here is how you can create a fake depth of field in a much more realistic way. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the method in Affinity Photo, and then I'm going to show you in Photoshop a AI filter who does it automatically. You will be amazed. Let's go first with Affinity Photo. So here we have our subject and the background is already a little bit blurry, but we want to have it more blurry. What we could do is to go down here to live filters and then select depth of field. But this gives us this kind of ellipse here and it doesn't follow the character and it's all over the place. This is just not working for us. So let's delete this. Instead, here is what we are going to do. Right click on that layer and then select duplicate. Then we are going to go to our selection brush and we are going to select our main subject here. This should be very easy. We can do this very quickly. So let's click here on Substract to go in the other direction. As you can see here, now it's removing the selection like so. And then in here we have some finer details. Let's go into that too. Up here, there we need to add something back. We also want to remove this here. So now we click on Refine. Check all of the areas. There's a little bit of, let's go over this here real quick. That's better. And then also here and then maybe also down there. Let's click on apply here. Okay. So here is what we are going to do. First of all, we're going to click here on mask layer. So this is creating a mask. So now we have our guy separated from the background. The second thing we're going to do here is we are clicking on the background. The selection is still on. Make my selection a little bit bigger here. So go to select, grow and shrink, and then go over here and make it a little bit bigger. Four pixels sounds good enough. Now I'm going to take my in paint brush. You might say, why not go to edit and then to in paint? But I found that the result is not as good as when I paint this with my in paint brush. So let's simply paint over that like this and then wait for it to fill. Hit control D to deselect and you can see our guy is gone. The reason why we need that is because when we start to blur the background, the guy will fade around the original shape and we will have a kind of dark halo. The next step here is to use live filter and then depth of field again. But this time I'm going to switch here to tilt shift and you can see we have here multiple points. The middle point is where the focus is and this is where the blur starts and this is where the maximum blur is reached on these outer points. So I'm going to move this down here because you can see this part here is equal distance from the lens. So we can rotate this a little bit and then decide how big should the focus area be. Let's click here on preserve alpha and hit the radius that we have a little bit more blur in here. Background is starting to blur and also the foreground is starting to blur too. We can bring this in here a little bit more so that the foreground blurs faster. But we still need our guy. So we simply turn that layer back on. And now you can see that the model is still in focus everywhere, even in the hair details, but the background is more blurred and we have full control over that blurred area and also where the sharp areas are. Now here I want to show you a different method. In this case, go down here to live filters and select the lens blur. When I have selected that, again, click on preserve alpha, hit up the radius, depending on how strong you want the lens blur to be. You can also set up the other settings here. We close this down and then we go to our brush over here. And we want to select black as a color. You want to set the hardness to very soft and then blow up the size to a good big size. Make it like this, for example. I want to reduce the opacity. Let's go here with, let's say 15%. And then I can tap here on the area I want to have in focus. You can see slowly, slowly, the restaurant is coming into focus like so. So I can think, okay, this part of the street is also there and then the car and then also this part here of the building too. So you need to figure out what kind of areas would be sharp. This is a little bit more work than we had before. Now this part here is in the foreground, which means we have to make our brush smaller and then go to white to bring that back. And now we can paint over this. Let's make the opacity a little bit stronger. 
I can paint these areas in again, so the filter applies to them. But this method, as you can see, is not super precise. This also starts to blur the background. You can, of course, circumvent that by making really precise selections, but this will take more time. At this point, where the image becomes more complex and it's a little bit harder to select the subject, this method falls a little bit apart, but it still works as a quick solution and technically easy way. Now let's switch over to Photoshop and here we can go to filter neural filters. You can see we have a depth blur filter here. Turn that on and wait for it to render the image depth. Now that Photoshop understands the depth of the image, you can go over here to this little preview and you can click anywhere, for example, on the restaurant. And you can see now this restaurant here is sharp, the building also, the house and the car, all of them are sharp. You can also set up here the focal range. You can set up the blur strength. For example, if you want to have less blur strength in the background, Another thing you can see happening here is that the blur is getting stronger the further it is from the camera. So this method also is more realistic. And you have additional settings here. For example, you can set the temperature of your image. Let's make this a little bit warmer. And you can also set grain here. Now this is very interesting. Let's set some very strong grain here. And you will see when we zoom into the image, we have very strong grain in the blurred areas. And then when we go over here in the sharp area, we have less grain in the image. This is also how it works with an actual camera. Now the good thing here is we can still change the focal point. So I can click here on the Eiffel Tower in the background and the Eiffel Tower in the background is sharp. I also want to show you a second example. You can see here most of the image is sharp. Let's turn on the effect and you can see now the foreground is getting sharp. Now I click on that chair here. The chair is becoming sharp, but also this chair over here, while the foreground with all of these nice little details here is becoming blurred. Also pay attention to how the floor down here is sharp, while the chair that is overlapping the floor is blurred. This method can be very useful to have more flexibility after the shot when you photograph a room so everything is in focus. Afterwards, you can decide for yourself or with the customer which part of the room should be in focus and become the center of attention. Leave a like if you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.